Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Maria, for those of you who don't know me, and for those of you who do. Hey girl! <laughs> I just wanted to uh, make this channel so that I can hold myself accountable for some things, like my weight loss, and to tell you guys a little bit of background of why I had to start my weight loss journey. Uh, so I did want to do this video first, so that way you guys can get some background as to why I started, um, because it is kind of a long story. <laughs> So I was just going to be like, long story short, like, this is how I started. Um, but so I don't do that. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys uh, know a little bit about me. And um, yeah, so just bear with me because I got some issues. <laughs> anyway, if you guys are interested, then just keep on watching. Okay, so I just wanted to start by saying that, disclaimer, um, I do not have the best family history health wise so this is why I had to get my shit together so let me just go ahead and explain because I do have um, some diseases <laughs> disorders <laughs> I don't know what they're called but you know let me just go ahead and let you guys know so I did want to just throw this out there real quick I did have some blood work done November of 2019 and this is important and it'll, it'll be important later okay but I just needed to throw that out there. <laughs> so sometime in 2018, I got diagnosed with costochondritis, and basically that is the swelling or inflammation um, of your, your, fuck, what's it called? <laughs> your, um, your joints that connect your breastbone and your ribs, some shit like that. I am terrible. I don't even know. And, Basically, this has to be the worst and most like a discomforting feeling ever in the chest. I hate it. It's just, you know, it's just been a long, I don't even know, like two years, three years now. Because when it gets inflamed, it's just it sucks it hurts it's very uncomfortable there's a lot of pressure that sits on my chest and i hate it like it can, it can happen you know whenever but obviously it happens a lot, of a lot of the time when i'm doing something or lifting something or you know whatever the case may be it just puts a lot of pressure on my chest and in between my breasts so it's just not a good time <laughs> Okay, so come 2019, I was still experiencing that pressure in my chest, so I thought it was something else. I didn't know what to think. You know, it's scary because I'm only in my early 20s, so I was just like, well, I'm like, I don't know. So eventually, I probably went to emergency twice for this. Um, one of the times, they actually took another EKG uh, to just make sure everything was okay with my heart. And this time when we had went, the EKG didn't come out exactly great, but it wasn't enough to admit me to the hospital and to run more tests. So I was like, oh, okay, like, cool. I'll just die at home in peace in my bed because that's cool. But I mean, whatever. So... Um, the doctor had said like, oh, it's okay, like it's probably just anxiety or you drink like a lot of coffee, that can happen, okay? And I was like, yeah, right. But I mean, whatever, we had to let it go and we had to go home. There was nothing that they could do for me. So I was just like, cool, I'll just die on my way home. <laughs> Come 2020, we were probably already like in April or May now and I had like a really bad anxiety attack and I was like not okay with it. It was like weird, it was scary. I was driving at the time and I was like, what the fuck is happening, you know? So I like pulled over, it was like really bad. It lasted like a few minutes. I don't even remember how long it was, but it really felt like eternity. So I called my doctor and I was like, I just had like a really bad anxiety attack. I don't know, my chest has been still hurting really bad. So, she was like, okay, come in as soon as you can. But I'm pretty sure I went in like the next day because that was the soonest I could get in. And basically, I told her 
um, that I just hadn't been feeling myself lately. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I took a test and stuff and I took a test and she said that I was depressed and I had anxiety and she's like I just remember it so clearly because I was just like what because <laughs> she's like okay like she read everything and she's like yeah like I don't know she went back she went like out of the room and then came back and she was like oh like my dear like you're pretty far gone and like when she said that I was like what <laughs> The thing about me is, like, I feel like I'm a really, like, happy-go-lucky person. I'm very outgoing, and I'm, like, you know, like, I'm just silly. And so when she told me that, I was, like, there's, like, no possible way because, you know, that's just not me. Like, I'm always happy for the most part. So I was just, like, no way. Like, and I was just bawling. <laughs> and so she actually prescribed me Zoloft. Um, and you don't, if you don't know what that is, it's just basically an antidepressant. Um, I don't know. I, I took it for a little bit, but <sighs> yeah, I mean, I just, I wasn't in a good headspace. I just felt like physically and mentally and emotionally just like drained, you know, like I felt like I just didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't have like the i don't know how to say like my gun has to work <laughs> i didn't want to do anything and that well i already knew like something was wrong but i was just like like no like i can't be depressed or you know like whatever it was but i mean that's what it was so yeah i mean it was like a really scary thing to get like diagnosed with that stuff because especially for me because i was just I mean, I still am, like, a very happy-go-lucky kind of person, and it just sucked, you know? Um, so, I felt like 2020, the beginning of it, was just, it was hard, like, really hard on me. Um, and that's actually between 2019, like, the end of 2019 and beginning of 2020 is when I gained most of the weight like bad <laughs> a lot of it so yeah come October 2020 I was still having a little bit of discomfort in my chest and I decided to tell my doctor this time because of the last time that we had went to emergency how the EKG just wasn't right you know it wasn't sitting right with me so I was like, okay, maybe I could just, maybe I could just go get checked out again. Like there's uh, nothing wrong with that. Like, you know, better safe than sorry. So I did and <laughs> this, this was it. This was the start of it. She pulled my chart to look at the last time I had blood work done and it was november of 2019 i believe right yes and she's like oh your a and a levels are high for um lupus and rheumatoid arthritis so <sighs> that right there i was like what the fuck like this is just gonna be another thing to just like set me back and set me into i don't know even more of a depression I don't know I was just like like this is great you know so but since the blood work was kind of old um, she told me to go ahead and get in touch with a rheumatoid doctor I don't know how to say it. rheumatoidologist I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Um, but yeah and so I had to do that but my weight she weighed me that day and she wasn't happy with my weight so she's like we're gonna do something about it i'm gonna help you and i'm gonna put you on this medication so i was like oh lovely so um yeah that's where my weight journey 
started because she told me that I was putting a lot of stress on my heart, you know, like the bigger that I got, the more that my heart had to work to, you know, fucking keep me alive because I was killing myself. <laughs> Not like to be dumb about it or anything, but you know, I was, I was very close to being pre-diabetic because again, I don't have the best family history. So being that, that I don't have the best family history, the whole heart situation and scares, she definitely wanted to bring my weight down. So I was like, fine, I guess. So that's where my weight loss journey started. And I will go ahead and make a separate video on that. Um, so yeah. So I get in touch with the RA doctor and she wants me to get new blood work done for this year well 2020 because 2019 was too old so she wanted to test me for everything possible that i could have um you know under rheumatoid arthritis and stuff like that so i went and got my blood work done i had to go back to her again and sure enough i have rheumatoid arthritis whoopie freaking do <laughs> so it's been it has been quite the few years it has been quite the experience these past couple of years i have costochondritis i have rheumatoid arthritis anxiety and depression so that's lovely and i did want to just throw like I want to throw this out there with people who have worse anxiety and worse depression than I do like I just have totally like a totally different view on anxiety and depression and mental illness like awareness now like I have such an understanding for those people who have it way worse than I do and like I have so much respect for them because mental health is something that is really an issue and something that a lot of people really just don't understand you know it's like i can be like i'm like really sad i don't want to get out of bed like i just don't feel like doing it today and people will be like why like what's wrong like you're just like you have it good and blah 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 blah, blah. you know what i mean but it's like they don't understand you know I just have a different type of understanding and respect for those who have mental illnesses and you know any kind of illness because I never thought that I could be in this position where like I have all of these things but I do and you know I just have to deal with it so my life has just changed completely um, there's nothing much I can do for costochondritis besides you know ice whenever I'm swelling for rheumatoid arthritis it's not curable so I have to ha be on medications for those and it's just been it's been tough but it's I don't know I, I, I feel like it's just put me like in a different position in my life where I just feel like very blessed and very grateful to be where I'm at and have what I have and you know, I'm only 24 and to have as many health issues as I do, it's scary, but it's just been like such an eye opener to me. Just like, okay, you have this and you have that and it's not okay because like, you're just a ticking time bomb, girl. <laughs> like, get it together. Otherwise, we're not gonna live a long life. <laughs> and we want to. <laughs> and it's been quite the journey and I wanted to share it with you guys because I feel like sometimes I'm not understood and I hate feeling that way but I also hate having to you know bug somebody or feel like I'm bugging somebody to be like hey like I'm feeling down today or hey like I'm in a lot of pain today or you know what I mean anything like that like I just hate to have to like have anybody feel like I'm a burden on them you know or like feel like they don't know what to say to me 
so I just try to, you know, stay away from that kind of stuff, but I don't want others to feel that way, and that's kind of why I wanted to share my story, so that you guys, if you guys have anything um, like me, or even if you don't have anything that I have, but you still have something that's different, but you feel like you can't go and tell somebody like, hey, I'm feeling like this today, or you know, like it's not a good day for me today because of of this or that, whatever it may be, you know? I just, I wanted to share my story so that maybe you guys feel more comfortable with whatever you guys have or, you know what I mean? It's just, a lot of people nowadays can be really cruel and they don't understand because they don't have it or they don't go through it or because they think it can't happen to them but that's not the case obviously you know what i mean i thought a lot of things couldn't happen to me and here i am three four <laughs> you know diseases disorders later whatever you want to call them but i think it's just been it's been really it's been hard to say the least but i feel like I had to come to terms with, you know, the new me and I just needed to accept me for what my body was and I needed to move forward from there because, you know, I don't have the best genetics and I don't have the best family history health-wise, like I said, but I think it all starts with me taking care of myself, so... You know that's what I have to do and lessons learned <laughs> you know I mean there was not much I could do to stop my rheumatoid arthritis from you know coming but it is what it is I have it some days are better than others I don't have it as bad as others but you know I still have it I still live with it and I totally have a different understanding a different viewing and a different perspective like for people who just go through it with whatever they have like I said I just wanted to share my story that way you guys just have a better understanding of me and so you guys feel just more comfortable within like yourselves because like I'm just a normal person you know what I mean and I feel like other people feel like they're just normal people as well but because they have this or that, they just feel like, okay, like I'm just not where this person is at. Or like, you know what I mean? It's just hard mentally whenever you have anything in your life that is, you know, challenging. So I just wanted to make this video for you guys. And I hope you guys, I know it was like short and kind of like all over the place. <laughs> But I just wanted you guys to get a feel for what I have and what's been going on before I get into my weight loss journey because this had a lot to do with my weight loss journey. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. And yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> that's it for this video. But I hope you guys enjoyed and have a better understanding of me. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Thanks for watching.